really bright. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Can we turn that way? Uh, <laughs> yes. We are going to go out and do a little bit of foraging, and we're going to take you guys with us. So, come on, let's go. Welcome to the Honeystead. The white pine, five ladders, W-H-I-T-E, five needles per little bundle. connecting point bundle. So we've got a lovely old white pine that's, that's been so very, very much saved here on the property. We are going to take some of the fresh because there is just so much. All right. I've got my jar. Okay. You don't want to harvest the dried stuff. Now, unless you're a beekeeper uh, like us, pine needles are lovely in your smoker. So, but I'm not worried about these today. I am worried about the beautiful green, green pine needles. I know it smells really really good i mean that smells it's like it's like christmas it's almost got a <laughs> lemony yeah it's beautiful the apothecary and we have our lovely lovely white pine needles and a little bit of the twigs so there's a few things that you can do with the pine needles one of the things that we like to do when we're working with herbs is going ahead and while we're working with it make a tea and taste the tea if it's if it offers that um, as one of the ways that it's usable what a great way to experiencing it while you're working with it and doing other things. Yes, and always double check whatever herb you are yes. working with, exactly like she just said, because not every herb you would want to necessarily have as a tea. Now, uh, what we have here, pine needles. This is the white pine. A good way to identify uh, your pine needle to make sure that it's the white pine. So see right here, this little shoot. You're wanting to count five needles per shoot, which these are kind of stuck together, but anyway, so there's five on there. Um, and then when you're also looking at it, if you flip it over, you have to get really close, but you can see a little white line. Those are good little tips to learning how to, to identify. Now, you can use the needles, you can use the bark, you can use the pitch, right. uh, which is that sap. That sticky resin. And it's going to get sticky everywhere. Um, so always make sure that you kind of are prepared for that, especially with that pitch, because you tend to, I think the only thing that we found that's been able to help get it off is by using rubbing alcohol. Yeah, hot water, soap, elbow <laughs> grease, and rubbing alcohol. And if you're climbing the tree, it will get all over your clothes. Yeah. Um, this is a good time of year to kind of harvest because really it's there, it's green. I'm not going to abundantly harvest a mm -mm. lot of this because this stays green all year round. It's an evergreen. So I don't necessarily need to fill the jars. Uh, but what we did decide that we were going to do, um, since it is a process and we are going into cold and flu season, mm -hmm. we figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and make up a, a pine, a white pine infused oil, oil so that we can make a salve with it. Now the salve will be used as a chest rub um, when you have a cold and you're not feeling Congestion. good. It's mm -hmm. also really good for pain, for, for muscle pain. I also read that it has antimicrobial properties in it as well. That makes sense. But as a tea form, we were reading some pretty interesting things about it. Yep, we, I, I personally haven't 
uh, experience just pine in a tea. So that's one of the reasons why I'm why I'm curious. I mean, if it tastes like pine soul, I'm drinking, probably uh, we're going to drink a Christmas drink. That's yeah, what or yeah. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to like that, but for the beneficial properties that it does offer um, for phlegm congestion and things like that, before I offer anyone else's suggested use of white pine needle tea, I think we better make sure it's palatable for us. Because yeah. not every herb tastes good in, as a tea form. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that we were reading, which I thought was kind of interesting, is it's a great source of vitamin C. And in the past, going through and looking at the history, uh, individuals who were suffering from scurvy, which, which is, is a vitamin C deficiency, deficiency, right? that's what they use to help get them the vitamin C that they required. And I also wanted to do a little bit more research on scurvy. A lot of people experienced scurvy, um, if I'm not mistaken, from when they were in ships and they were trans, they were transporting to different areas of the world. Uh, people experienced vitamin C deficiencies, which is scurvy, which I thought that was kind of interesting and I wanna do a little bit more history uh, lessons on that. On that. You can use the needles, you can use the, oh, gosh, the so twigs, you can use the bark, the, the bark um, especially that inner bark, and you can also use the pitch, which is that sap that kind of seeps out of it. I am hoping, and I feel pretty confident inside that the twigs that we did harvest, there is a little bit of the pitch. I was unable to... Well, it's gotten a little cold, so yeah, the pitch is... It's a little pitch hard isn't, to get. Yeah, pitch isn't so freely... Uh, following, I did read something about uh, <clears throat> it was not uncommon to chew on a piece of pitch if you started feeling like you weren't feeling well. But I will add caution if you have any kind of <laughs> uh, dental work. You will um, be pulling that out. <laughs> yeah, that might I, that where maybe a tea would be better yeah. <laughs> to get that. I also saw where some will take the pine needles and infuse honey. Uh, and oh. use their their honey with the pine needles, which I thought was pretty interesting. Maybe for like a cough syrup Maybe or a sore that's throat. That's what I was mm -hmm. thinking because it is really soothing, um, especially if you are just not feeling good. I'm just cutting them up to expose as much area on the needles as we can. That way, when we do the infusing, we have a greater opportunity of by busting open these pores like this to infuse the oil uh, with the properties of the pine that we're trying to get in the right. oil. And we are gonna use olive oil. You can use all different types of oil. So, and there are different ways that you can actually set up an oil uh, mm -hmm. for your pine needles. You can do it in a crock pot. You can do it kind of low and slow. On the stove. We are limited to time. So we're gonna actually treat this just like we would all of the other oils and the herbs that we infuse. Um, and that's where we put it in a jar, top it with the olive oil, and then make sure to cover uh, it with cheesecloth and not seal it up because this is considered fresh. I have had a lot of people ask about the oil going rancid and as long as you have it covered with the cheesecloth, I feel very confident, um, at least from our experience with us and how we do it here, our oils have not turned. Uh, so you don't want to seal it. That's the biggest trick is don't seal it. And once it's been infused, um, you know, if an oil has gone rancid, you're going to be able to smell that. It's going to smell, I don't know, to me, the only way I can describe, describe it is it just smells old. It smells old. And, you know, and if it smells old, don't you know, it. don't use it. And especially if it's pine, something like this, it's so readily available, at least for us, Make another batch, yeah. and then you can do it quickly, like Kaylee was saying, or you can do it slowly. And I've also seen where people will have the, the little yogurt makers. Um, oh, if yeah. they need to speed things up, they can do set their oil and their plant matter up in the little yogurt, uh, little yogurt container. I don't have one of those, so... And you all know, of our crock pots have gone to beeswax. Yeah, so <laughs> this is fine. This way is fine. Right. Maybe we'll have to decorate the apothecary with oh, some pine with the branches. Pine needles. Yeah, oh, that'll be pretty. So I don't want to clean them up. No, maybe. I don't want to clean them up. So the thought is there. The thought's there. Yeah, the maybe thought. we'll do the front door and the outside. I like that. That's a little bit easier. Because, right. Ouch. Don't, don't, I don't want to add any of myself into that. Is that a chunk of finger inside that no, sack? No, no. <laughs> 
and don't break your skin in the process of making your salve. But if you did, this could be used as an antimicrobial. And I did read somewhere that I think they used pine needles to help stop bleeding as well. So they packed wounds as like a poultice, so. Could be. I don't know. You're pushing it. No. I did read it. I did read it. I'd have to find out what book it came from. But here's the thing. Always do your own personal research on whatever plant matter that you are using, introducing. Make sure that it's compatible with your life, with your health, with any any medications or allergies. So it's the opportunity to learn what's out there and what could be beneficial to you or harmful for to, to you. That's your due diligence. If you're going to experiment with pine specifically, there's different kinds of pines that can be used, but in our area, white pine is something that's the most red, readily available. Right. Now down a little bit further south in North Carolina, um, I know about loblolly pines, and I have heard about loblolly pine and their medicinal attributes, but that's just something we don't necessarily have readily accessible fresh here, so mm. this is what we have, and this is kind of where we're this is the direction that we're going in. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of filling a jar. You're gonna freestyle it. And we are, there's a whole ratio that you can do. The biggest thing is, is just make sure that your plant matter is completely covered with your, your menstruum that you're using, which and, is the oil. That's and, what we're using. And get the bubbles out. Yes, so I think that We'll add that and then we'll, we'll be done with yeah, this. Yeah, and then I'll use that last rest a little bit to make some tea with. Yeah, I'm shaking it up and I'm not packing it down. But the ratio is really going to be um, one part plant matter to four parts of your oil, um, which is the, the ratio that I found most offered in some of the books. Oh, okay. So I might have to take a little bit of this out. Well, if you compact it down, if you're here. Okay. Then, and, and then we fill yeah. up to the rim, all you'll right. be all right. All right, let's just, you could measure this, but. We're gonna wild craft we it. We are gonna wild craft it. Um, and I am using just regular olive oil and I'm gonna have to get more, I can already tell. Okay. We fill me up and then we got chopsticks the other day. They're in the far left drawer or where the bowls are. Aha! Awesome. So we're just gonna tap this. I'm just gonna tap it all the way. Yep. Okay, perfect. So what I'm doing is basically just running this around the edges and I'm making sure that there's no air bubbles similar to like what you would do if you were canning. But the, uh, the biggest thing is just making sure that the plant matter is covered. You don't want to have the exposure. Now this is going to sit with a little bit of cheesecloth over top of that. I'm going to go ahead while she's getting the cheesecloth, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the little bit of pine needle that we're going to use to make the tea ready. I haven't had straight pine needle tea so this is going to be interesting. And a ring. so what I'm doing, I'm taking my cheesecloth, placing it over top, and I'm just going to screw this in. Uh, you're going to store this in a, a cool, dark place for up to six weeks, and then you can make your salve with it. And we got to make sure that we label it because that is a practice that takes time. You think you're going to remember. You're going to look back on your notes and think you're going to remember. But 99% of the time, you don't. you're guessing. Oh, we don't. We don't. Reaching around you. Okay. And oil. E-V-O-O. -O. And we are today's date. That's the other thing. Always make sure to write your date. And your ratio. Yes which is really going to be a one to, this is kind of a one to four ratio, mm -hmm. give or take a little bit. And I'll stick that on that, but this is gonna make a lovely salve. For a chest rub. Mm -hmm, for a chest rub. One of the things that I, I read um, that makes total sense mm. too is, so 
If you're outside in the woods and you're foraging and you're able to to walk in in the pine trees, um, you know that's part of feeling better too. Especially if your chest is just kind of, you know, if you've got something kind of going on that you're fighting, having that opportunity to just be outside and get that fresh breath of air is part of feeling better. Mm -hmm. um, breathing in the smells and all the properties that pine offers you know there's something very beautiful about going outside and mm. and going for a walk and i know sometimes when you're not feeling good that's not the first thing that you're going to want to do but getting up and moving and breathing fresh air i think is very very important um to to your overall health and how you're feeling and sometimes just it, when you've not been feeling good and you get that shower mm -hmm. you know and that steam starts to open you up I mean, why wouldn't you grab a few twigs and hang it in your room? Yeah, I know. I thought about that, too, because I was telling them in one of my last videos about um, how I cannot grow eucalyptus, and that would be a goal of mine, and I'm going to try it, uh, but hanging peppermint in the shower as well to kind while of you're showering? while you're showering oh, to sure. kind of release the volatile oils um, so you can breathe. Mm -hmm. You have a little home spa day. I know. I'm gonna. You're gonna see me. I'm gonna be bringing my Christmas tree in my shower. Well, my goal is to get the outside bathtub maybe underneath the I pine know. tree. <laughs> and you know, the other thing that you could do too with this is uh, possibly put it. If you have a wood burning stove, mm -hmm. putting it on the kettle, putting up, chopping up some pine on the kettle or just even breaking it and just breathing that in um, mm -hmm. I think offers something doesn't have much color no I bet if we I bet if we dry it mm. of course it's very hot it's very hot doesn't taste too mm -hmm. bad for anyone who is kind of interested um, in, in wanting to learn about white pine and possibly incorporating it. It's definitely not like my go-to plant, but the thing that I want to focus on is what do we have here? What is available here to us in the event that we need it? And knowing that white pine offers such a high level of vitamin C, to me, intrigues me. You know, this is part of using what you have, mm -hmm. going out and foraging and having the ability. And that is the one thing that I think that really it has to my heart. It does. And it's what I find is there's a lot of scary things happening all over the all over the world at any given time. But what I have found with the ability to forage and know the plants that are around us, it's that we have gained a level of... It's almost an empowerment. Right. You know, that self-knowledge, that resiliency, um, and that deep lining, um, I'm going to say comfort. Well, and it feeds, it takes the fear out of it. Right. You know, I... I I could go down, and I'm sure you guys probably have been following a lot of different YouTube channels, and there's a lot of things that are, are fear, uh, and that's that's okay if that's that's okay. I think what I want to do, and I can't speak for my mom, but I think she's probably right there with me. Um, I'd much rather diminish it a little bit. I don't want you all to fear. I want you all to challenge yourself and take this and mm -hmm. and turn this in a what can I do? What is in front of you? What what do you have around you? Um, definitely not my go-to tea, but I love the fact that it's out here and that we can utilize it in the event of that we need it. So I wanted to add, I am feeling a little bit of a I want to say mental yeah. or a little bit of a film. It's warming and cooling mm -hmm. in my mouth, and I do feel uh, warming in my chest. Mm -hmm. It's very soothing. It's very comforting. It doesn't... Uh, I could see where if this would not have been my first go-to, mm -hmm. I don't feel good. I'm, you know, Peppermint feeling... or chamomile would yeah. have been my first. But, you know, in a pinch, if I didn't have that, you know, 
I like the fact knowing that we have something that's growing right here right. that offers and offers a, uh, some relief. And I'm gonna just pull real quick. This is my Peterson field guide. This is uh, Stephen Foster and Dr. Duke. What I like about his books, if he has anything written in here, um, he'll go into the history. Like, who used, who used to it? use the white pine? I've got a guess. If I've got a huge guess. <laughs> but our Algonquin groups use the cold bark tea at, as a treatment for colds. The resin from the bark wound, so when it's seeping out the resin, right. they would take that and boil that to make a decoction for sore throats, cold, tuberculosis. The Iroquois used powdered, soft, dry, rotten wood as a kind of baby powder for chafing. And the leaves were used as an incense in homes to prevent sickness of all kinds. Those references were all Native American mm -hmm. or Native Indians, you know, in our area, the Algonquin and the Iroquois, that, yeah. and there's a rich history of that in this East in Coast this area, area yeah. from, so. And I, then it also says that Native Americans, uh, they use the pitch as poultice. The pine pitch to right. draw out boils, abscess, um, or any type of cuts, bruises, sores, inflammation. It even says broken bones. The twig tea used for kidney and lung ailments. I felt it in my lung. Mm -hmm. I haven't felt it in the kidneys yet, but yeah. we'll keep us dip. The bark and the bark and or leaf tea used for colds, cough, gripe, sore throats, uh, lung ailments. Uh, poultice for headaches and back aches and the inner bark formulated for cough syrup. I love the history of it. I love yeah. who figured it out. And I think that if we can honor our, our ancestors in a way, I mean, this is honoring our ancestors and continuing to learn this knowledge. So I am very excited that we were able to do this. We'll keep you guys posted on the, the white pine needle oil that we're infusing right now because in a matter of weeks, we're going to come back through and make a beautiful salve, um, but... That's going to be a nice little Christmas... I think so. A holiday. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Thank you guys for coming with us and going on a walk and doing a little foraging and then spending a little time with us in the apothecary. Oh, yeah. And as always... Don't be afraid... To get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.